Hello everybody and welcome back to the Hilltop Pillbox here in Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada. And today we're stepping out into the unknown. We're going to do a quick game of America by Historical Board Gaming. This came out about five years ago now. And uh, I was gifted this by none other than Panzer King himself. He had purchased a couple of these and he sent one my way, and so Panzer King, once again, you have uh, you have outdone yourself. So thank you so much, and I hope that uh, as I play this, I do the game proud, and I uh, hope that hope you enjoy. Uh, I have never played America before, so still working through the rules. And fortunately, General Hand Grenade put out a really good two-part how to play America video set and that it's over four years old now uh, and he did some uh, little personal um, printouts and things to, to help make the game a little bit easier and a little bit easier to, uh, to for flow so I went out today I, I downloaded them they're on the video and then I just uh, printed them and got a nice color printers done here and and then just put them in sleeves to, to keep them and that's uh, that's very, very handy. Also, we have a victory chart here. Now, if you have seen his video or if you're going to watch his video, which if you are if you have America or you're buying America, I highly recommend. Excellent work. Uh, he the, the one thing that this game had a bit of a knock against it uh, when you've seen some reviews is that it didn't have a score sheet attached to it. There was no score sheet. They wanted you to grab a pen and paper to do it. And uh, some people kind of poo-pooed that. I'm, for my part, like, who cares? Like, I don't really mind. Um, but uh, General Hand Grenade just designed this easy uh, chart. And so I decided to print it out and uh, got the victory points here. Now, one difference is that uh, when General Hand Grenade did his scoring, basically he says, you know, wherever they go, they go back to the... So if they get, you know, 17 points, they get 10. If they get 29 points... You know, if, you know, if they get enough points in a round but get to like 36, they just get, they're back down to 30 or whatever, right? Like they, they go back to the lowest 10. Uh, but in the, in the rule book, you're supposed to keep score of every single point you get as the allies. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to utilize this D10 and add that. So if maybe on the first round, you know you get 15, but then if I roll a 3, I know that I'll have 8 points. So now I have... I know I have 18, got 82 to go. So that way I'm not shorting myself of any uh, any points I should be getting. Uh, really easy to understand chart here. This is for initiative. I'm not going to go through the rules though because he did a, an excellent job. And plus, I'm too new at the game to be an expert of it. Just a couple of things that I went and did just to... Uh, remind me of some things is that they have these nuclear research facilities and uh, one of them is to have fuel so that's my fuel and this one over here is to have uranium so that's uranium that's a rock from out in front of my house huh? <laughs> and over here is steel because you need steel fuel <clears throat> and uranium in order to make a nuclear bomb in this game and then you start dropping it on the bad guys. Uh, or the good guys if the bad guys take over these facilities. Um, and so what you do is uh, you, you uh, or what I chose to do was go and put these uh, just these nifty little, they're called realistic resources and I bought them off historical board gaming and I've got tons of these when I do uh, role playing games. And we put these things on the map, and then the, I typically play with uh, uh, teens, right? And, uh, the, the guys like to have the tactile things instead of writing down that they found some wheat or found some sheep or something like that. It's it's actual miniatures. So I really like these, uh, and I thought, you know, that'll add to the game a little bit. So I put those in there. The other thing is that the Germans have their V2 sites, so I've got a stack of those. And I've got rockets for them to fire. And that's General Hand Grenade used the same thing in his. Uh, we also have militia tokens, which are going to be their guerrilla attacks. And these are some new sculpts that you can get. Uh, actually, I shouldn't say sculpts. They're, they're poured, I believe. Resin. 
and these are from historical board gaming. Now, when they when they come to you, they're just gray, they're just a flat gray. And so what I have done is I've uh, painted uh, this one up here, and my wife painted the other one. She's the she's the whiz with the paint, and she knows how to mix paint up. So um, anyway, so you just kind of made them look like they're they're kind of mushroom clouds, <coughs> and uh, you know going off. So if I ever do get to drop nukes, I'll have something to put on there. And the last thing are just these Victory City tokens. These are from Fortress America. I'm sure you all recognize them. You just need a dozen of those, and that's easy enough to do. <clears throat> so I pulled them out of one of my copies of that. Everything else, though, is right out of the box. Uh, General Hand Grenade has his uh, expansions that bring in the heavies. I don't have that. I've just got these. So we're just going to use the sculpts that the game gave us, and I'll let you know how things go. All right, so we've got our... We've got our armies all uh, set aside now, and now I'm going to uh, head and do the first turn, and I'll let you know how it turned out in just a moment. All right, round one is done, and I went back to the roll book probably 10 times to see if I was doing it correctly. I learned something very important in college, the value of books. Really? Yeah, look at this here. Free papers. <laughs> but the axis rolled horribly, horribly, horribly. cities this turn. Now granted I stacked up the cities pretty hardcore but uh, still they should have taken at least one of them. They had a good shot at taking DC. There was only two infantry there and all they did was kill one. And you have seen never seen so many failed orders in your life. Now, here we go. Thank you. This is what I'm talking about. Turn around, look at that. You see what I mean? It's, it's plump, it's juicy, it's three inches thick. Now, look at this sorry, miserable, squashed thing. Can anybody tell me what's wrong with this picture? Anybody? Anybody at all? If that's this, this die here, when they roll that, they don't get that. And I th I think in every attack, at least one unit, and in some of them, three units rolled those. So they just weren't even shooting. And because you only do one round of attack, uh, yeah, it was uh, pretty, pretty bad. Pretty bad for the Axis. They took no cities. So the Allies have all 20 cities, which means they make 100 bucks worth of reinforcements. So that's what 100 bucks of reinforcements looks like. There are limits. You can only build one infantry or mech per, pardon me, per city uh, that you own. So, you know, you couldn't take that 100 and build 50 infantry and just spam the board. Uh, so, um, thought I'd build some air power here, though, and uh, hopefully that'll help out a little bit. The Allies actually didn't attack anything on their round because they can't attack into invasion zones and uh, these guys here are kind of untouchable. So what it's going to come down to right now, and this is my first time playing so I may have really goofed this up, but uh, the nice thing is, is you, you, know, you can get things back, is that if the Axis go first, well they can come in here, take that city and come in here and take the Oak Ridge nuclear facility. And uh, that would be bad, right? But not the end of the world. And uh, there's a lot of stuff coming on here, so they'll probably be able to take it back. But um, that's stuff you want, don't want to have to fight over. You want them to have to come to you. Also, uh, the Japanese and Germans uh, failed at their attempts to open up the uh, second fronts here. And uh, so we'll just have to come in from the coastlines. 
Seattle was a real debacle. They had uh, a grand total of three hits, I think, total. Two or three hits total. Or is it two? Might have been two. Might have been one. I don't know. It was pretty bad. And whereas the Japanese ended up losing a fighter and a bomber. And uh, yeah, you can see the guys here didn't answer the orders properly. So, well, we'll find out after uh, we do our round two. We'll see what the initiative roll does and see who goes first. It's going to be very telling. Will we save the nuclear research facility in Oak Ridge? One small caveat is I forgot to take two hits off. I remembered that the, the two uh, big tanks got hits, and so, yeah, I took off the medium tank and the self-propelled anti-aircraft. So, uh, yeah, they did get a couple hits, but just just simply not enough. And when you got all your guys running away, it's really hard to win a battle. <laughs> Plus, I really stack Seattle. I just put a ton of guys in there. Uh, so the, the Japanese, uh, I thought, you know what? We'll come in there with like 15 things and see if we can't uh, wipe it out. And it failed. All right, on to round two. Boom. Well, how quickly the times can turn. Yes, the Axis had a much better second round. Uh, mainly owing to the fact that they get their, they got the initiative and they were able to put on their builds and go smashing. So we're gonna take a look at the board now. So over here, the uh, Axis were able to take DC, but Boston held on despite an aerial bombardment and New York held on. Uh, not much left in New York. All of that is build, except for one infantry held on in New York. So I, I believe so. Eh, it might have been like three infantry, but yeah, that's uh, all build happening there. And so the uh, the Germans, a little bit stuck here. But in the interior, they were able to take the Oak Ridge Nuclear Facility and Nashville. Now, I placed these guys in New Orleans, hoping to go up there and take it. But you cannot blitz into a mountain territory, which Nashville is, if you look at the background. So... That kind of stunk. Probably be able to take it back this turn, but really could have used that, uh, that money. That is for sure, but maybe we'll get it back uh, this turn. Uh, Ottawa, of course, fell. Not much fight going on up there. But now Detroit and uh, in on this side, um, Phoenix are just two away. You see the Japanese mechs here can come down to Phoenix. One, two. I bulked up Salt Lake City to keep hold of that because the Japanese are spreading out like crazy. As you can see, they took Seattle and Vancouver. And, oh, there goes the cat. Uh oh. And, uh, but they still also got a lot of these uh, you know, not listening to their commanders, their, their failed orders. So San Francisco had one guy left on it. I plopped down another five to maybe hold on. But LA fell. Uh, to the Japanese military might there. Their bombardment, actually, the pre-bombardment with their uh, long-range artillery there took them out, so not even a shot back, which is kind of sad. And uh, the Japanese also rolled a one, so they are able to use these southern invasion zones here in the southwest. So uh, after watching a couple of different videos on that, though, including General Hand Grenade's excellent video series, um, it seems as though that's almost a waste of time. I think that's if you're really getting clogged up here for some reason, uh, that you can kind of do an end around, but it looks as though it's pretty wide open. Now the allies do have a ton of bombers and they're going to go around and bomb some stuff. Hopefully have some more luck. They went to bomb Nashville here and they all missed. Well, two of them missed in Nashville, one of them missed in Oak Ridge. Unfortunately, they didn't get shot down. So, yeah, yeah, it's just been, uh, yeah, odd. The dice have been very odd. So we're gonna see who gets to go first here on this next round. It's uh, highly likely it's going to be the Axis. So, hey, let's roll it out here in real time. So the Axis have the plus six 
Uh, I had them here and I moved them up actually before I rolled. It seems like kind of a done deal, but you never know. So the axis have six plus nine. Yeah, so the allies don't even, they're not even gonna roll. So the axis are gonna go first and we'll uh, see if San Francisco is gonna fall. I think Boston should probably fall here. New York could be a tougher nut to crack. And uh, these, these guys here, although they can blitz, they cannot blitz. Uh, over a river, so they're they're unable to blitz into any of the other cities right now. All right, we'll see what round three brings. America's kind of hard pressed here. Maybe the Allies can get it together. We'll see. All right, next round is done, and uh, a better round for the Allies. They're actually able to take two cities back, so we'll uh, we'll roll for the initiative here and uh, let you know in real time what's going to happen. But on this side of the board, the Germans got kicked out of Nashville, got kicked out of the Oak Ridge Nuclear Research Facility, and did not do well up here. Again, fail orders, right? When you have your heavy tanks and regular tanks and a couple of men refusing to follow orders, well, that just doesn't work. They do have a V2 rocket site. It missed on its last turn. Uh, and now it's definitely in trouble of being overrun by the Allies. And, uh, yeah. So, depending on who wins the initiative roll here. If the Allies win the initiative roll, this is going to be really, really tough for the, the Axis to pull out a victory, I think. If the Axis win it, then, okay, now they got a shot. Now they got a chance. Um, again, my first game, I'm not sure if I've overextended or if it was uh, kind of a fool's errand to head out here, but it was fun to do. Still got our big bomber fleet there. Starting to build some armor in the Midwest and uh, out here in the Rockies, and trying to bulk up. Headed out here with three infantry just to take a poke right there, but missed. The Japanese horde is now on the move, now that they got through Seattle finally, but San Francisco remains. This is the same as uh, General Hammer Grenades game, I think San Francisco was fighting pretty tough, so. Uh, I find that just pumping some infantry in there will usually help you hold on to that, to one of these cities. You gotta focus though, you gotta focus, cause uh, if you try to divide them up, then you'll, you'll get beat. You'll be defeated in detail, as they say. Uh, Phoenix is looking a little healthier now. Yeah, we're gonna have to bulk that up though, cause we don't wanna lose that to, uh, to the Axis. And we may very well lose Oak Ridge to the Axis here because they have, right, they've got five units right on the border of it. So it'll be uh, it'll be crucial for us to hang on to that. They might go after Nashville, though, depending on who has the initiative. All right, but that's what we got here at the end of this round. Some more failed orders over here in Japan. Not as many, though. And... That's, uh, they haven't had to do much fighting just uh, here in San Fran. They only got, I think, one hit with all that stuff, and including a bomber. <laughs> so, when the dice are ice. All right, next round coming up. The Axis need to push into the east here. And as soon as I clicked off the camera, I thought, shoot, I was going to do the real-time roll. So here's the initiative for the Axis. Right, and as we can see, the... Uh, Allies are going to get a plus one to their roll because they've liberated one more CD than the Axis took. So here's the Axis roll. Well, that's not good for them. That's a three then. So the only thing the Allies don't want to roll is a one. <laughs> that was close. All right, so the Allies are going to have initiative here. They'll be able to put on their build, which is a fairly impressive build. Um, and maybe they'll be able to hold on to San Fran a little longer. Maybe they'll be able to push the Germans right back into the sea. We'll let you know. All right, so here we are, and it seems as though the Axis had a little bit more success and were able to defeat uh, a decent stack, I think some six or seven units in Boston. And so that's, uh, that's been tamed. And, uh, but the Allies have a good stack in DC, so once again, the initiative roll is going to be pretty important here. Ottawa is empty except for a V2 site. Now you might be wondering, what's with the V2 sites? Now that's off of the um, these uh, things that I got from General Hand Grenade's video. And on the Allied turn sequence, you, you know, you place one of these per turn, one of these things into a German territory per turn. 
and then whenever during the allies turn they can fire up to three zones away and, and zorch something so uh, they did that uh, this turn but the one that was down here uh, I didn't I didn't don't have the rules on it but I'm assuming when the allies go in it just goes away so it's gone away so they the Germans have two instead of three uh, of the v2 stations everything else here got cleaned out though uh, the Germans failed again on the southern front so if they get initiative again and get the southern front they could scoop two cities pretty quickly so it's uh, that's where it's going. But on the die roll here, the, we roll a d12. For two turns out of three, the Allies roll a 12. So they are right now at 70 points. And as you know, they get five for each of these that they have at the end of their turn. Okay, And then you add the die roll. So on turn two, they got a 12. On turn three, they got a 1. <laughs> and on turn uh, four here, they got a... They got a, or turn three, yeah, turn four, they got a, uh, whatever number it is, they got a 12 again. So they, they launched up, they went up 22 points. So from 48 all the way up to 70. So they only need 30 more points. Looks like that's going to be tough for the Axis to, to deal with. Now the Japanese are doing pretty well, but they still didn't take San Francisco. They killed six of the 10 infantry that were there. And if they get initiative this time, they should be able to snuff out San Francisco. And there is also a, a rule, um, and again, it's on the sheets here that if the, um, I won't bother blinding you with that, if there's an empty city, the Allies can attempt to capture it just by rolling. If they get a one or a two, they put an infantry in there and they capture the city back. So uh, I didn't find that in the rule book. I haven't, I haven't been really exhaustive in the rules though, but I don't, I think that's an optional rule or maybe is it something that came with the expansion. So I've decided to play with that rule and thereby have left uh, a couple of Japanese guys in Seattle and Vancouver, one in LA as well. If the Axis go next, uh, there's a good chance that the Allies are going to have to really, really fight to get through the uh, some of these territories. Uh, there's a good chance Salt Lake City will fall. There are eight units in there, mind you, but it's, uh, it's almost surrounded, so if the Axis go next and they cut them off, which I'm sure I would choose to do, then they can't place any units in Salt Lake on their turn. So once they get cut off, they're cut off. Same with San Francisco, uh, did get liberated so they could place guys in there, but um, and there wasn't anybody uh, there. So the Japanese have decided to try to encircle some cities. And yeah. So that's where we are right now. The Allies are doing pretty well. Looking looking like a pretty handy Allied victory, but who knows, maybe they'll start rolling ones again and maybe they won't be able to get Los Alamos back. So Hanford's definitely gone. The one up in Washington up here, that's, that's, uh, that's gone. But we'll see if they can hang on to Los Alamos. On the next turn, will these bombers play a role? They have been, kaboom. Okay, another positive round for the Axis. So they gained two. The Allies did liberate one. We'll tell you that story in just a moment. So essentially we take these two off and move this up. So they're now at eight. Need four more. Well, we'll start on the Atlantic side here and we will show you what's going on. The uh, Germans were able to easily come down and take New York and are now threatening Washington, D.C. Uh, over here, the Allies sortied out and smashed an armored column, but didn't quite destroy it. And over here, you can see there's Germans. Germans in Houston. I believe that is, yeah, Houston. And they were actually in Nolens as well, but uh, came down here with a tank and two bombers, and they were able to kill the lone tank that was down there. So it's a good thing they were able to do that, otherwise the... Uh, a little tougher, a little tougher. So at the beginning of this round, the Allies had uh, 13, so they could build 65 bucks worth of stuff. And uh, now, if the, if the Allies go next, they'll be able to reinforce a few of these cities, because Phoenix now has an out, and Salt Lake City now has an out, thanks to some 
uh, good play by the allies to open up the door a little bit. And they can now build in, in really any of the cities that they currently own. Nobody is cut off uh, right now. If the Axis go next, they'll be able to strengthen their hold up here and probably make a push towards Detroit again and possibly come up through the south here. They've been kind of, looks like DC might be there to stay. So they might have to come up through the south and Phoenix, well, it's got 10 things in there and killing 10 things in this game is turning out to be a very difficult uh, time. But the uh, Japanese have a lot more stuff coming. Salt Lake City down to two guys. So if the Axis go first here, they will uh, likely take that. Now, the other thing is that the... Uh, nuclear research facility down here in Los Alamos was taken with authority and there is no way the Allies are going to get them out of there, especially knowing then that Phoenix is likely going to fall the next turn. So the Japanese have decided to come up from the underneath here and from the south and the Germans as well. So now it really is a three front war for the Allies, uh, but they did have a decent roll again. They rolled a 10 to go along with the five that they had from their Oak Ridge nuclear research facility. So they're up to 85. They only need 15 more points. I suspect they'll get that in a couple of turns because they'll get five automatically and then five more the next turn. Of course, they still have to roll at least a three each turn in order to finish the game. But we're going to keep playing. We'll see how the Axis do here on the next round. And we're going to roll it out right now, so we know that it was a plus one for the axis. So, here we go. So that's going to be a 12. So the allies have to roll, whoops, have to roll a 12. Oh, come on. Missed it by that much. And they didn't. All right. Actually, even if they had, the Axis would go first because you retain the leader. So all they need, needed to roll was an 11, and they did. So, on to the next round, and the Axis will go first. See if they can scoop a couple more cities. We'll see in a moment. Okay, so here at the end of the round, the Axis took two more cities. We're going to roll and see if the game's going to end here, or if we'll have one more round. And... It's over. That's a 12. 12 plus the 5 puts us right up to 102. We'll just make it official here. 102. So the Allies are going to win this game. But the Axis were coming on pretty strongly here. They just had kind of a slow start. So we're going to show you the, the map at the end here. The Germans decided to put a bunch of stuff down here. And the Allies had to respond because that's, that's two cities plus threatening two more. The Germans also did a, a, a kind of an end around here uh, to not have to hit Washington. It's a little too tough and they're headed for the nuclear facility. So had they been able to capture that, uh, the Allies don't have anything really in position to take it back. So they'd be just rolling a die and uh, might not be able to get the numbers they need. The Allies are pushing in the north here. So Ottawa could be liberated, it's possible. And they could also, of course, come down and head after Boston because there's not much left there. Uh, up here, the Japanese sent a bit of a force, three tanks and a mech up here, but the Allies were you know, put that to put that to rest right off the bat. Didn't want that guy there. And now the Allies can head on over this way. Uh, Salt Lake fell with some authority. And uh, the rest of this stuff is uh, probably not long for this world. Denver's not too bad. Yeah, it's not going to get attacked this round. But there's a good chance Phoenix will fall. It remains cut off, and now there's a lot more stuff that can hit it this turn. So, uh, my thoughts on this game are that is that it is a lot of fun. I, I really like the game. I like the, uh, the mechanics of it. I like the little additions. I like the... The stuff that General Hand Grenades added in to spice it up a little bit with the V2 rockets flying around. And I like the idea that instead of just cities, you've got these nuclear 
sights that you're trying to hang on to. And of course, you're, you know that you're likely going to lose this one on round two. There's very, very little you can do to hang on to that. And that's if Seattle falls. If Seattle doesn't fall, then eh, you might have a shot at it. But, uh, but this one here, of course, fell round five, I think it was. This fell on round three, I think it was, two or three. But that's just because nobody was there and they took it right back. Uh, also, the idea that the Germans and the Japanese can hit from the south is uh, a, a really nice touch. I like that. I, uh, as a Canadian, I appreciate these three cities, uh, Ottawa, I grew up just south of there, Winnipeg, I met my wife near there, we got married there, and Vancouver is near where I live now, so a little bit of attachment to all three of those, it's kind of cool. I, I think this game is superior to Fortress America in the fact that there is less uh, focus on the cards that the Americans are going to get and the springing up of the partisans. Uh, if you've played Fortress America, I think that's the part of the game that was skewed heavily towards Americans. And most often when we played that game, the Americans would win. The, the invaders would do pretty well, but just run out of steam. If uh, the Russians had a bit of a tough time over here on the eastern seaboard, there was no way they could win the game. Like they, they would just the whole place would pretty much lose. Uh, the South had the easiest time of it, and uh, the West had had a pretty easy time of it. But the reinforcement cards added such an element of chance and such an element of uh, you just don't know what's going to happen, and, and these guys could be popping up behind you and and cutting off your forces and. As, as realistic as that may be in that you have partisans. Wolverines! Wolverines! Partisans are exactly that. They're not a force uh, that's going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with military. And yet, in that game, uh, they defend uh, very strongly. They attack the same as infantry, but they, they defend 30% uh, better. And they were very tough to get out of the mountains, especially. So, we, we found that there was a definite uh, pattern to the game. And there were two or three cards that you were always looking for as the Americans, that once you got them, it was pretty much lights out, because they just focus fire, typically on the east, if they could. And, like I say, if you put the east to bed, it's over. This game seems to not really allow for that. Um, again, I've only played once, uh, but I've read up on it, I've read people's reviews, and I've watched YouTube videos on it. And it seems as though there's... There's so many more options here, and the end game is not just fighting over the cities, right? And uh, there's there's options, and there's there's the the randomness of the die, which can go high or low. Of course, I had three rolls this game with uh, with the twelve. You don't have those. We've got another couple of rounds, and in another couple of rounds, who knows, right? There could be three more or two more cities here. Uh, Minneapolis could be under siege. These ones in the south, the Germans might be having fun with, right? You just don't know. And the the Allied economy has been shrinking. This last turn, it was only 50, right? So the Allied economy is shrinking, and the uh, when they're at 50 and the Axis are at 60, they they're putting less stuff on all of a sudden, and now it's now it's an uphill battle. So even with the great rolling, I think a couple more rounds. And the Axis could have pulled off a victory here. The other thing I added uh, that I watched with uh, General Hand Grenades was the Militia. I guess that's an expansion thing as well. Similar to the V2, except you do this on the Axis turn, where the Militia, or Partisans, if you will, Wolverines, they spring up and they take shots. It's amazing. Every round I hit at least one, and sometimes I'd hit two with this. Uh, very, very good. The V2 rockets, the same thing. For some reason, they were sniping guys. I sniped two tanks last turn with that. So, 
yeah, just um, it's just funny how sometimes they're hot, sometimes they're not. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, folks. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this uh, little detour from uh, Global 36, Global 39, 40, BBR, Anniversary, all those other things we do here at the Hilltop Pillow Box. And we will definitely try to get one with a, a person and play this live sometime. But until then, thanks for playing, and may those dice be with you.